Hey, everybody. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. I am here with my co-host, JC. How you doing? Hey. I am doing fantastic going into 2024. I'm sure I have things to complain about, but nobody's listening. So we're just going <laughs> to, you know, jump right over that. <laughs> Fair enough. Got another, found another, uh, another training company today that, that is pretending I work for them. So of course I had to go and send a C- cease and desist. Telling you, man, this running business stuff, it, it's not what you think it's going to be. <laughs> 25% of your work is the actual work that you want to do. And then the rest is just everything behind the scenes that you wish you never had to deal with. With that said, we have an amazing guest here today, Lindsay Stanton. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. And that definitely resonates what you just said. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're the president of Digimi. Is that how you pronounce it? Digimi? Yes. Yeah. Tell our listeners about your organization and how it can help them. So we are really in the business of digitally assisting our clients in all shapes and sizes to be able to tell and sell their story to job seekers in a unique and trackable way. So what really differentiates us is I know there's a, you know, there are obviously other organizations doing video, but what's unique about us is we actually have a patent around our video job solution that allows us to track all the candidate engagement, even off of social and even off of totally organic social. So wow. that's the game changer. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. Um, I dabble in recruiting. I used to do a lot of recruiting. Now I have a, a contract recruiter that works for me who's way better because she has a lot more patience, <laughs> which apparently is key for recruiting. Uh, so I love, I love this story here. I want to, um, maybe do both, you know, talk about best practices in 2024 and beyond for job seekers and or maybe for people who are looking for candidates because, you know, there's no un, unfilled positions out there are there (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh, the recent stats say otherwise um yeah but i think there's uh, like one and a half um job openings for every job seeker out there right now or close to it last uh labor statistics that came out but yeah and i think it's a valid question to have it on both sides because you know at the end of the day both are responsible for making sure that it's a more seamless process than it is right now. And um, there are a lot of things that I feel like on both sides of the equation that they can, that everybody can do better. And it all really all boils down to communication on the client side. The one thing we always recommend is really tell, you know, your full story about the job opening, the requirements, if there's heavy lifting, if there's certifications, like get into it and you can communicate over a million words of content in a 60 second video. So there's no reason to leave gaps. (laughs) And then on the candidate side, you know, we know that they're not necessarily reading the full job description when they read postings on like Indeed or whatever the site might be. Um, They're generally just skimming. So what's nice about video is they've you kind of got no reason not to (laughs) absorb it people absorb 70 percent more information so it does help you understand things like the job the culture whether or not it's even an organization you would want to work for so making that process a little more seamless on both sides because at the end of the day it's kind of like you know a marriage if you go into it with all the information up front you're going to have a lot less issues on the back end and it's going to help with conversion. It's going to help with um, retention. So being able to, you know, kind of give all that information on the front end and then on the job seeker side, absorb all that information on the front end. I love it. Go ahead. JC has a question. Yeah. So what would be the equivalent of the prenuptial agreement in that situation then? (laughs) That is a great question. I'm glad you asked that. What we would consider the candidate expectation. So um, our clients will build a video that tells what the next steps in the process are going to look like, being fully transparent that it might take four to six weeks for somebody to look at their resume and be in contact with them. You know, I think transparency on the front end, just like a (laughs) prenup, is really important. I love it. I love that question too, because it, it really is though. Like, I love that we're, we're talking about it in this, in this manner. It is a relationship and the days 
are gone where the employer is in charge, right? right. Uh, the, and and I don't. I want to also just be fair that the job seekers aren't one hundred percent in charge either. Everybody is confused and it's complicated, and there's a lot of chaos going on, especially if you're a small business who has never really hired before, and you put an ad out and you weren't prepared for it, and then you get one hundred and twenty resumes, and nobody has time to go through that. But most of those resumes, in my opinion, you should only have got twenty because you put the wrong job ad out. You yeah. didn't put enough information. It was too vague. You allowed anyone to apply. You didn't ask any, uh, you know, prerequisites like, do you live in this state because you're required to work in, in this state? Well, are you willing to take X amount of money because this is what we are offering? Do you have this license because it's mandatory? You know, I, when I tell coaching my clients, I'm an HR consultant. I always say, what are the go, no goes? And let's get them out of the way before the person even hits submit. But then on top of that, let's make your job ad look so inviting that people who aren't even qualified want to apply, but doesn't make it a little more difficult for the recruiting team. But at least you have candidates that are like, put me in. This is an awesome job. Oh, wait, you don't have these skills. So it is it is a it's a sales it's a sales thing on both sides, right? 100%. 100%. And I think to your point, that's why I think investing in things like landing pages or CRM tools where you can have a database of people that you can go back to just because they aren't a fit for one role. You know, we everybody in the space knows that it's not really about skills. You can train skills. It's about the person and, you know, are they going to fit within the organization? You can upskill pretty much anybody that's willing to learn and is a good cultural fit but at least if you get them you know in your system and and the important and <laughs> have a way to engage them afterwards then um that that's a tremendous benefit to you because you haven't wasted all those attraction dollars that you spent to get the word out there about the position or the organization to begin with yeah. And, you know, JC and you were talking before about, you know, it's kind of like a marriage and with a prenup and all of this information. And it's also a little bit like dating, right? Where, um, in, talk to us about the opportunity for em- candidates who aren't employees yet to like kind of try out an employer. What, what suggestions do you have so that employers can put their best foot forward and close that dating deal? <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's why we really encourage our clients to do more in culture or, you know, videos about who they are as an organization. And I'm not talking about just like generic general messaging. I'm talking about really showcasing behind the scenes of what their initiatives are. Like we've got some of our clients who are very focused on military recruiting, for example, and that is a specific audience and, you know, language vernacular to use to attract that that job seeker. So really speaking to them on their terms. And I think that's why social plays so well into it too, because you, if you're trying to attract a certain type of job seeker, you need to go where they are. It no longer works to try to force the job seeker to go to, you know, a a certain destination, whether it's your careers page, whether it's Indeed, you have to be able to reach them where they're already going. And that's through SEO and that's through social and that's definitely through mobile and video. So I'd say, you know, putting the best foot forward to give the job seeker all the information on the culture of the company, not just the details of the job. And ultimately to your dating analogy, that's your hook, right? You've got them to opt into who you are. Now you can sell them on what you're trying to sell them, which is the right. job. And, and then making sure, and I think JC has some stats to share with this, but making sure when you're selling them that it it's going to be a sale, a sell of a relationship because you don't want to, uh, sell them a bill of goods and then pull that wool out from underneath them later. You just spent $15,000 to get them here and you lied to them. So listen, people that are listening today, do not lie to your candidates. If you have had challenges in your organization and especially if they're public, people are going to know about it and they're probably going to ask about it. So prepare your managers, not just your recruiters and not just the hiring team, but all your managers with the same 
uh, for lack of better words, story so that everybody's giving the same information. It should be factual <laughs> and it should, you know, say, OK, yes, we've had that challenge. It was in the news. This is how we got over it. And this is how we're not going to make that mistake again. I think transparency is just so important and it's just missing so much. That's why people come accept a job and then leave because they say I was sold a bill of goods and now I'm out of here. So I'm so thankful that there's an organization like yours to help these people. JC, you have a statistic you wanted to share according to forbes in 2024 economists suggest the job seekers need to be aware of some key economic trends and one of the big ones there stable quit rate the quit wait the quit rate reached 2.3 percent in september 2023 indicating the end of the great resignation it needs to maintain its pace consistent with 2019 rates but still higher than historical standards as from Forbes. The interesting thing, yeah, the interesting thing about that, I, I personally think the quit rate is probably much higher. Most businesses um, are small businesses. Most small businesses don't have ways to track this. They just say the person is employed or not. And so they may have be, be reporting the unemployment as a involuntary termination when it was really somebody walked out the door and so you know i just want to let our listeners know don't get caught up in all those statistics really find out like go to industry uh lunches and conferences and things like that and ask your uh your friends and your enemies your frenemies hey what's going on in your business over there what do i need to be worried about and then start asking your candidates why are you available and don't judge them that they quit because i'm sorry it is a candidate's world right now and i personally think it's going to continue to be a candidate's world for quite some time what are your thoughts on that lindsay i completely agree i mean if you look at you know the retirement rates and people exiting the workforce it's just going to continue to get more and more um leaning towards the the candidate side of things 100 percent. and i would also say to your point about the statistics you know the other thing is two people that were at an organization so briefly at the fit was so bad that they didn't even document that they went to that organization right that definitely happens <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'll tell you, um, as the HR lady, I give a lot of people advice on their resumes and their uh, LinkedIn profile. And there's sometimes I just say, don't even put that on there. You could bring it up in the in the um, interview if you get the interview, but don't even put it on there because it's confusing. And it's hard to say on your resume or your LinkedIn profile. I started working at this company, but they sucked. So I left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And there's like the whole thing of like, how does that reflect on you too? you know, and yep. like nobody during an interview wants to hear, you know, your bad story about somebody else that's, you know, kind of a red flag for prospective employers. So you got to be careful about that as well. Yeah, you 100% got it. You can't say, yeah, they suck. You got to say it a different way of like, there were some challenges that were not exposed to me in my interview. And once I found them out, I chose to leave. <laughs> that was well coached and said. <laughs> All right. So thinking about best practices for job seekers in 2024, just some rapid fire questions for a real quick, Lindsay. Should candidates, job seekers head into an interview while they are live on TikTok? Is that okay? I, I vote no. <laughs> Probably the unless, best answer. Unless they're doing a marketing position for TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a rabbit hole. I'm going to stay out of that hole. I'm going to stay out of that hole for a second question for you. Is it better to uh, have a interview in person or do it virtually or no difference? I think no difference. As long as you are equally prepared and your appearance is equally on par, <laughs> I think there is no difference. <laughs> yeah. So whether in person Just don't or show online, in your PJs regardless, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whether in person or online, shower, dress up, um, don't have TikTok uh, TikTok on, and maybe turn off all your devices. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to do in your free time? There's my last question for you. Really, it was rapid fire. What do you got, Lindsay? Walk my dogs. There it is. What kind of dogs you got? I have Spinoni Italianos and a Dandy Dinmont. <laughs> those Spinonis are no joke. You know what you're doing with those guys right there. Oh, my gosh. All right. Sorry, Wendy. Back to you.
<laughs> That's okay. My favorite thing to do in my spare time is drink wine, which I'm about to do momentarily as soon as we wrap this up because, you know, I can. I'm an adult and it's the winter and there's nothing else to do. So <laughs> although I am in Florida, so we don't have the snow and the crazy weather, but it is kind of foggy and blah here. With that said, Lindsay Stanton, thank you so much for coming today. Tell our listeners how they can connect with you, the best op- option to connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, easily find me on our website, www.digi-me.com or um, LinkedIn is probably the easiest. Awesome. And I will make sure that your link, both of those websites are in the description of this podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Take care, everyone.